Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be discussing why you might want to get into home automation. In a getting started with Home Assistant in 2022 series, this video is going to be more theoretical than practical, discussing some pros and cons of home automation and helping you to justify it when your significant other starts asking why you've spent so much money on smart gadgets. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. And check out some of the links in the video description to help support the channel, either by buying smart gadgets through some of my affiliate links, joining NordVPN using my affiliate link, or contributing directly to my buy me a coffee page. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. Now, a couple of years ago, I spoke a little bit about why you might want to get into home automation, but home automation has evolved a little bit since we last explored the topic. So I wanted to revisit it. If you've been thinking about getting into home automation but haven't quite been able to justify purchasing any accessories or pulling the trigger on setting up an orchestration platform such as Home Assistant, hopefully throughout the course of this video, we'll be able to find a reason compelling enough for you to get started. The first thing is obviously convenience and that's the first thing most people think about. I've been living in a smart home for several years now and I feel a little bit spoiled. It's really convenient to walk into a room and the lights just come on because of motion sensors or to have a shower and the exhaust fan automatically turns itself on when the humidity gets too high in the ensuite. There's also the convenience of scheduling events to happen like having lights come on at specific times of day. And this is a bit more nuanced than a regular old timer like this one. For example, you could set up a holiday mode to make your lights turn on and off randomly instead of at a set time every day. I learned from watching Home Alone that if the lights always come on and off at exactly the same time every day, some people who, who are watching your house closely will know that no one's home. There's also the convenience of using things like presence detection to arm and disarm security systems without needing manual in intervention. And that means it's not super inconvenient to make sure that the house is secure when you leave the house. It's also really convenient to have remote control over aspects of the house too. For example, if we do leave the house, but realize that we left the TV on, we can open up the Home Assistant mobile app and turn the TV off pretty easily provided you've got a smart TV that is. In case it's not obvious by now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, I'm kind of a nerd. And being able to gather data about my house and the way that I use the house, things like temperature, humidity in each room, energy consumption of various appliances, or when different lights are on or off, allows me to understand a little bit more about how my house works also how much energy I'm consuming or producing from my solar system at any given time. And knowing these things helps to identify things that I can do to either improve the way that my automations are operating or even just reduce my energy consumption. For example, knowing the energy consumption of my appliances like the fridge, freezer, dishwasher, washing machine or dryer can help me to identify if any of those appliances aren't working optimally. Because if they go outside of those thresholds, we know that maybe they need some maintenance. And then we can get that maintenance done before the problem gets too far gone. And we then end up having to replace the whole appliance. Another consideration is energy. With energy costs completely out of control right now, any method to reduce those costs is worth considering. The first thing we need to know before we can reduce our energy consumption is to know how and where we're consuming energy. So like before, we can gather the data about our energy consumption and our production, and then armed with that information, 
we can then move our energy consumption activities like running the dishwasher to times when we can reasonably assume that we'll be producing more energy than we're consuming. If you've got a solar system, it's really not worth exporting energy back to the grid unless you've got net metering, which at least here in Australia is only available in a few places. Getting paid six cents per kilowatt hour to export excess solar energy when it costs you 22 cents per kilowatt hour to consume from the grid doesn't make a lot of sense. It's better to move your consumption to times when you're producing lots of power. I've also previously made a video about my energy provider, Amber Electric, who pass on wholesale energy prices to the consumer and offer an API to pull the current price of electricity. With the right energy monitoring solution, you can then use that data to make a reasonable estimation of how much your energy bill is likely to be before the bill arrives, or even use this information to plan your energy usage, or even automate it so that you reduce your energy usage when prices are higher, or even better, if you're producing excess energy, you can then track when the export tariffs are high to export more energy during those times to offset the cost of your consumption even more. There are some integrations with home scale battery systems too, but I'm yet to explore those because I don't yet have a home battery. Soon, hopefully. That said, having data about your energy consumption can help you make some decisions about the capacity that you need if you're looking to install or upgrade a solar or battery system. Our next consideration is security, but there's more than just security built into this. It's actually pretty common in home automation to make use of things like presence detection devices to trigger automations like turning lights on when a motion sensor gets triggered or even having some lights turn on after dark if you're not home. If you're going to be using things like motion sensors for lighting, it makes sense to also use those motion sensors to trigger an alarm system. I have a separate video about making a home assistant alarm that you might want to check out. You'd probably also want things like contact sensors to detect doors and windows opening and closing. And those can also be used double duty by allowing you to detect and receive alerts if someone leaves a door or a window open or you get a notification to close the windows if it starts raining. If something does happen and there's a break in, the data that you could gather with your home automation system might even be helpful for investigators to track down the responsible parties. And I might take a closer look at that in a future video. And that's without even mentioning the possibility of adding security cameras with recording capabilities to your smart home. An extension of the security consideration is safety. Firstly, there's the safety aspect of not coming home to a dark house and hurting yourself by stumbling around in the dark trying to find the light switch. But there's also family and pet safety aspects too. Having automations and sensors in your house monitoring conditions like open doors, temperatures, and motion can help you to know when doors get left open unintentionally or if it's too cold to leave the dog or cat outside. And having room level presence detection can help you to keep track of the kids and make sure they're keeping out of mischief. We'll be looking into room level presence detection in a future video as well, so again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Next up, integration. Something that really frustrated me when I first got into home automation was the fact that there is, at least for now, a lack of standardization between gadget manufacturers. Without some kind of orchestration platform like Home Assistant, integrating your LifeX lights with Xiaomi motion sensors to your smart switches and having all of them available to HomeKit, and then by extension Siri, wouldn't really be possible without some kind of orchestration. On top of that, in my opinion, the home automation systems from big brands like Google Home and Apple HomeKit lack some fundamental functionality that allows better automations. Something I'm dealing with currently that's slightly frustrating, and it's with a HomeKit-only light, the Nanoleaf Essentials light bulb that I reviewed in a previous video, is that the automations within HomeKit don't allow me to add any nuance, like waiting for a motion sensor to be clear 
for five or 10 minutes before turning the light off. It's just that the sensor goes clear, so the light turns off, and that can happen within a minute. And if that sensor can't detect you moving because you're in the shower, the light turns off, leaving you showering in the dark. Home Assistant automations do let me add this level of logic to my automations without a lot of trouble. And I've recently been working on a fix for this particular problem. So again, make sure you're subscribed to see how I solve that problem. Another consideration that I've mentioned before is accessibility. Whether you've got young children in your home or people living with disability, Home automation, or at the very least, smart home accessories can definitely help to make your home more accessible for those people without breaking the bank. In the past, I've heard that a lot of accessibility items are quite pricey to have installed in a home, but a lot of home automation gadgets are not particularly expensive and they can be had for, you know, 20, 30 bucks. So by mounting a smart switch at an accessible height for the kids or for wheelchair bound users, or including smart assistant control like Amazon, Google Home, or Siri, you can definitely provide equal access for everybody in your home. And accessibility isn't just for kids or the disabled either. There's also the concept of situational accessibility. Situational accessibility isn't necessarily about everyday accessibility needs, it's about temporary needs. Like when you're carrying your shopping in from the car, it might not necessarily be as easy to turn the lights on, so motion sensor activation and or smart assistant voice control makes a lot of sense. Or maybe you're holding a baby or a squirming cat and need to turn the lights on. Or maybe you're recovering from an injury or medical treatment with limited mobility or dexterity. Lastly, there's really a lot to be said for the wow or cool factor of home automation and smart homes. If you're having a house party, wowing your friends with automated lighting in the bathrooms or a light show and announcements from smart assistants when they ring the doorbell is a pretty fun way to showcase some of your smart home capabilities. With most smart lighting projects, it's also possible to get RGB lighting to add special lighting effects during an event to then provide some additional ambiance and enhance the mood of your party. Now, there's a couple of reasons that you might want to avoid automating your home. And obviously I'm biased here and you probably should just do it. But there are some circumstances where you might not want to. If you're super concerned about privacy, you do need to put a lot of thought and effort into the way you automate your home to make sure that your privacy and your data is not being shipped off to third-party manufacturers. And I do talk a little bit about that in some of my videos where we're looking at cloud native accessories. Another thing to consider here, and I'm not trying to sound elitist here or anything, but if you're not good with technology, then you probably don't want to start down the smart home rabbit hole unless you're trying to improve your tech skills. It's really not an easy learning curve and it can be very easy to bite off more than you can chew very, very quickly by thinking that a project is going to be really quite easy and then spending four days without sleep trying to figure out what went wrong. You do need to set the right expectations with yourself before you get started. As I say, home automation is a deep rabbit hole and it's very easy to sink a lot of time and money into smart home gadgets. So make sure that you are budgeting for the gadgets that you purchase and not just buying them on a whim. So there's some thoughts on why and also why you might not want to automate your home. Do you think I missed anything? What's your why for home automation? Let me know in the comments section down below and let me know if you'd like to see other videos on a similar topic. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment below with home automation ideas you'd like to see covered in future videos and don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, now's the perfect time to think about changing that. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll get a notification when I release new videos, and that's normally every week. If you're looking for a VPN provider, there's an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description as well. 
And I chose to partner with NordVPN because they've got the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers, a strict no logs policy and servers all over the planet. On top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform around, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your sensitive information while you browse the web. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description as well. Contributions through buy me a coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.